In the center of bustling Guatemala City, there is a place for homeless and abandoned children run by three Orthodox Christian nuns who accepted an offer from their government to take over a neglected and vandalized facility. When they asked us to take over, they said, you will have to rebuild. I said, well, okay, because we saw it had a church. And we spent about a year just trying to get the funds to be able to fix the place. There was nothing decent in this place. So it took us a lot, a lot of effort and time and funds to be able to run the orphanage. Well, most of the children ended up here because uh, their parents, uh, maybe because of their poverty, were, weren't able to provide for them to be raised. There's a big alcohol and drug problem amongst many of the adults. Uh, some of the children experienced different forms of abuse and some of them were just on the streets, you know, just trying to survive on their own. For many of the children, they've come out of families and homes where everything was kind of in chaos. And so here at the orphanage, everything is very, very orderly. Simply having order in children's lives is something that's very soothing for many of the children. When we took the orphanage, we didn't realize how deep the abandonment harms the children. Of course, we found out very soon how wounded these children were. But because we believe in God and we know that He's the only one who heals the hearts, then uh, they, uh, we invited them to come to church. And uh, we knew that God will, uh, will heal their hearts. Well, some people, when they think of orphanage, they think of an institution, they think of, of a place that doesn't have compassion or caring. It's just a job for people, for the nannies. This is not like any orphanage because it is first and foremost an orphanage that is established by the church. The life of the orphanage revolves around prayer life. They certainly have their classes, they have school like any other children would have, they have to study. But the prayer life and, and the services of the church are also part of their life. And the nuns love these children, the nannies love these children. If you don't have a love for these children, then you wouldn't be here because it isn't just a job. Actually, the word Hogar means home. It's a beautiful place, especially for me. I've grown up here. I have been here for five years, and I feel like it's my home. Over the years, many of the children were adopted by caring families from around the world. And when we send a child, really what we do is that we gain a family, another family. So the family grows, and they keep in touch, and uh, now with this thing of Facebook and those things, we follow them up and they love to be on Facebook uh, a little bit too much. For me, uh, when I think about supporting different charitable organizations, it's always really important to support something that I can see works. And having come here for six years, I've seen the good that has been done here at the Ogar Rafael Ayao for so many children, children who have passed through here briefly and children who have spent uh, 10, you know, 12 years here. And knowing that the staff here are incredibly committed, that the nuns here really care very deeply about all of the children, uh, is something that's very important. It's just like parents. What do parents do for children? They try to find opportunities for them and to open doors, because you never know what they would like. So we open doors for them. To Thanks to the generosity of an American volunteer, wow. Alan Russell, the Hogar has a complete modern wood shop that has captured the imagination of the teenage girls, especially Astrid. We make boxes, bookcases, pens, puzzles, and special furniture. I like to invent different things and put woods of various colors together. I would like to continue to work as a carpenter and dedicate myself to becoming a great carpenter. It's really very hard to wrap your head around what they've accomplished. It's so much, and it's done with an enormous amount of patience. They don't often talk about the setbacks, and we know there have been many. They will not talk about whatever goes wrong. They will only talk about the ultimate success. The orphanage, Hogar Rafael Ayao has been in this part of the city since the mid-1800s and occupies a full city block downtown. Surrounding the entire property, there stands a very tall brick wall. It provides a secure, safe environment from the increasing physical dangers outside. The whole point is that we have like an uh, oasis here in the city 
because the orphanage you come and in spite of the noise and everything is peaceful you have the church in general it's quiet the park is beautiful you can walk while it is safe and secure the hogar is also isolated the nuns had to find a way to bring the outside world in to the children well, how do you open them to the world so bring the world inside so we bring the missionaries which brings a lot of interaction and social interaction for the children. Part of the missionaries here is so important. The children learn to be social. Otherwise, the children are very shy, very insecure. They don't trust people. They trust no one, even among themselves, because their basic trust has been broken. The minute a mother, a father, a family abandons a child, that basic trust is broken in general for life, unless they find the right people. And the missionaries play that important role. So that is very important in their lives, to be able to make contact, to be able to love other people, to remind ourselves that we're brothers and sisters. My English is not perfect. Every day I'm, I'm learning, you know, every day I learn mo more. The most of my English, I, I think I learn with the missionaries because I like to share with them and I like to learn and so I practice with them. Pressure from the government imposed changes on the orphanage. Laws allowed crime to thrive in the immediate area around the Hogar. It was becoming a noisy, dangerous area. We are surrounded by buses all over. Uh, we are surrounded by prostitution. So at night, the noise is incredible. So it's, it's not livable. And the girls cannot, uh, they are afraid to walk outside, and I am afraid. Most of our employees have been uh, robbed outside. Then in 2008, the government changed its adoption policies, ending all international adoptions. So no children can leave the country, which from my point of view is a tragedy because there are so many children that need permanent homes. This change in government policy means that the remaining children would now make the Hogar their permanent home. To add to the confusion, the government is also hinting that they might take over the city orphanage, possibly leaving the current residents without a home. This set Madre Inez on a new mission. Just a few miles outside of the city, the nuns received a generous gift of land where they have built a monastery and church. Trained as an architect, Madre Inez skillfully transformed what was just the edge of a mountain into a fully functional property, one that would serve both the spiritual and practical needs of the orphanage. We are building here the uh, future orphanage to transfer the children from downtown, a very polluted area, to this clean area, in the mountains, in the land of the monastery, which is surrounded by the beautiful lake, mountains, and volcanoes. When I see a piece of land, I create there. And then I follow some patterns that we have. Like, for instance, I like arches, because they give a very nice feeling. And then we had the experience here of running the orphanage, so we knew what the children needed. So we built and we organized the building according to the needs. I think we probably have had about 100 children every year, so it's about 1,200 children that have passed through the orphanage. And the group we have now is the group that will stay. So we have a big family of about 70 children. We tell them this is your family forever. And like any family, as long as you want to, to live in, at home, you can. Well, I finished high school, I graduate, and I'm gonna start college. I'm gonna live here, I'm gonna stay here because I like it, this is my family, and I think I have to be where where is my house? Help the children of the Hogar complete their new home. Please support the friends of the Hogar Rafael Ayao. I remember when I first discovered the Hogar Rafael Ayao. I was so impressed with everything that the nuns and the nannies and the teachers were doing to help the young children who called the Hogar their home. 
As you've seen in this video, there's still a very urgent need. The nuns are building a new home for the children. Construction is underway on the shores of Lake Amatitlan. The basic shell of the building is up, but far from habitable. With your help, we can install the utilities, add windows, doors, equip the rooms, provide areas where children can read, study, and learn to use computers. We can prepare a beautiful new home to welcome the children on the shores of Lake Amatitlan. Your donation today to the FHRA Capital Campaign will help to raise the funds needed to complete construction of Hogar San Miguel. You will help us to build a brighter future for the children. Thank you so much for your support.